Hello, it's Sarah. Today's August 29th, and I'm reading today's morning and evening for you. Sorry I missed yesterday, but I've been camping. It's really beautiful up here. So glad to be here. Oh man. You guys gone camping lately? It's amazing. Okay. Um, here we go. Getting the light here. Alright, morning. Have mercy on me, O God, Psalm 51.1. When one of God's choice servants, William Carey, was suffering from a dangerous illness, the inquiry was made, if the sickness should prove fatal, what passage would you select as a text for your funeral sermon? He replied, oh, I feel that such a poor sinful creature is unworthy to have anything said about him. But if a funeral sermon must be preached, let it be from the words, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. In the same spirit of humility, he directed in his will that the following inscription and nothing more should be cut on his gravestone. William Carey, born August 17, 1761, died. A wretched, poor, and helpless worm, on your kind arms I fall. Only on the footing of free grace can the most experienced and most honored of the saints approach their God. The best of men are conscious above all others that they are men at best. Empty boats float high, but heavily laden vessels are low in the water. Mere professors can boast, but true children of God cry for our mercy, or sorry, cry for mercy upon their unprofitableness. We need the Lord to have mercy upon our good works, our prayers, our preaching, our offerings, and our living sacrifices. The blood was not only sprinkled on the doorposts of Israel's houses, but upon the sanctuary, the mercy seat, and the altar. Because as sin intrudes upon our holiest things, the blood of Jesus is needed to purify them from defilement. If mercy is needed to be exercised toward our duties, what will be said of our sins? How sweet the remembrance that inexhaustible mercy is waiting to be gracious to us, restore our backslidings, and make our broken bones rejoice. That is a really good one. I might talk about that one later. All right. Evening. All the days of his separation he shall eat nothing that's produced by the grapevine, grapevine not even the seeds or the skins. Number 6-4. Nazarites had taken, among other vows, one that debarred them from the use of wine. In order they might not violate the obligation, they are forbidden to drink the vinegar of wine or even strong liquors, and to make the rule even clearer, they were not to touch the unfermented juice of grapes, nor even to eat the fruit, either fresh or dried. In order to secure the integrity of the vow, they were not even allowed anything that had to do with the vine. They were, in fact, to avoid the appearance of evil at all costs. Surely this is a lesson to the Lord's separated ones, teaching them to come away from sin in every form, to avoid not merely its grosser shapes, but even its spirit and likeness. Such strict walking is much despised in these days, but rest assured, dear reader, it's the safest and happiest path. He who yields a point or two to the world is in fearful peril. He who eats the grapes of Sodom will soon drink the wine of Gomorrah. A little crevice in the seawall in Holland lets in the sea, and the gap soon swells until a province is drowned. Worldly conformity in any degree is a snare to the soul and makes it more and more liable to presumptuous sins. The Nazarite who drank grape juice could not be completely certain whether or not it was fermented, and consequently could not be clear in their heart that the, his vow was intact. In a similar way, the yielding, vacillating Christian cannot have a clear conscience, but is constantly aware of his double standard. Doubtful things that we need not worry about, or sorry, wonder about, they are wrong for us. Tempting things that we must not play with, but run from them speedily, um, um, but should run from them speedily, sorry. <laughs> And better to be sneered at as a Puritan than to be despised as a hypocrite. Careful walking may involve much self-denial, but it has pleasures of its own that are more than a sufficient reward. That's a really good one, too. And I would really, I'm, I'm kind of thinking which one I would prefer to share um, maybe in a couple days, a little bit more expansion on as far as kind of my thoughts and prayers and just from my own experiences. So, yeah, think about that one, too. Well, I hope that you guys are doing well and enjoying your Saturday and look forward to, we'll see, trying to come up with another, um, another video for tomorrow for August 30th. Take care and God bless. Bye.